Hey guys, welcome back to How to Roll Dice. I'm Josh, and in this video, I've got a little bit of a do-it-yourself homebrew tutorial for you, and that's going to be custom painting my Logitech G710 Plus mechanical keyboard. If you're not familiar with the G710 Plus, it is a pretty popular model from a few years back. It's this guy right here. It is a full-size keyboard, so it's got the uh, number pad off to the side. And it is backlit, though it is only backlit with white light because it's from around 2012, and that is before RGB lighting was easy to find and easy to afford. It does have some nice additional functionality to it. It's got a, a volume roller wheel. It's got some media control buttons. It's got some programmable profiles built into it that I can control through the Logitech app that pairs with it, as well as some gaming function buttons down the side that I can also program. Uh, it has Cherry MX Brown mechanical switches in it. If you're not familiar with mechanical switches, Cherry MX are some of the nicer switches that you can get, and the color at the end sort of denotes the style and the pressure of each switch. Browns are pretty nice. Um, they're not what I would prefer. If I was going to go with Cherry MX, I would go with greens, but not very many keyboards actually come with greens because they have such a heavy pressure to them. I believe greens have a 75 gram centigram um, pressure to actuate them. Uh, the switches I would actually prefer aren't from Cherry MX at all. They're actually from a company called, I, I believe it's Novel Key, and they're called Sherbets. And those actually have, I think, an 85 centigram uh, pressure and something like a three and a half uh, millimeter travel. Basically feels like you're typing on a modern typewriter, which is something I would really enjoy because I love typing on my vintage 1945 Royale typewriter. If I could get that in a keyboard, I would be very happy. Switches aside, because I'm not going to be modifying those in this video since it requires desoldering all of the existing switches and soldering on 106 new switches, which I will probably film, but it's certainly going to be tonight. Uh, the keyboard is pretty easy to disassemble, and since it has a pretty standard black and gray color pattern to it, other than this one little chunk of orange that they put over here, I was thinking that it would be nice to disassemble it, give it a good wipe down, and then once I get it into its individual panels, actually spray paint some nifty colors onto it. Because it's just pretty standard, untextured plastic, it should be pretty easy to wipe it down, get it nice and dry, and give it a good clean coat of spray paint. It should adhere to it pretty well. So what I've got here, is a roll of paper towels and a semi-damp sponge, and that's gonna be for wiping it down and making sure there's no grit or anything left on the keyboard once it's disassembled. I've got this nice cobalt uh, electrical or electronics tool set. I did have a smaller set, but it wasn't very, uh, it just didn't have much to it. It had basically three screwdrivers of each type. So you had three hex heads, three Phillips heads, and three flat heads, and they were kind of meh, like they stripped a lot of screws on me and I wasn't very happy with it. This kit here is much more geared towards computer work. Uh, if I show you on the inside, you can see it's got several sets of tweezers and plastic clips and plastic sort of um, flat tools that you can use to separate clips from the inside of electronics. A lot of times there will be small plastic pressure clips that hold things together other than the screws, and it's difficult to pry those apart, and it often feels like you're gonna break it if you don't have the right tools, so it's nice to have those. And then inside of this blue magnetized compartment here, I actually have a much sturdier hand tool with fully interchangeable heads and quite a few more heads at that. This was about 35 bucks from Lowe's, so definitely a solid pickup as far as I'm concerned, something that I'm likely going to be using quite a bit. Then over here, we've got the actual spray paint that I'm gonna be using once I get everything apart and wiped down. So I decided to go with matte colors, uh, or sorry, satin colors. I was going to go with gloss, but then I decided it would look a little bit more custom if it had a, a duller, matter finish to it. However, if I went with truly matte colors, there were far fewer color options. So if you aren't aware, satin is actually sort of a nice middle tone between a full matte and a full gloss. I find it closer to matte than to gloss because it doesn't have much shine to it, but it doesn't have that completely like flat look that matte paint does. It's got a little bit more texture to it. So I went with satin white, and it says right on it that this works on all textures, uh, all surfaces, any angle, no sanding, no drips, no errors. I've got satin lagoon blue. These are all Krylon, by the way, not that it matters because we're painting a keyboard and I don't think they make us a paint specifically for that, so I just went with whatever. Um, and I've got a satin ballet slipper. If you don't know this about me, I like bright, bright and flamboyant and um, sort of standout colors. Uh, not quite neon, but just, you know, bright and, and poppy and, and, you know, pretty. 
So I decided to go with a bit of a candy, uh, cotton candy mix here with the pink and the blue and the white. I haven't yet decided what colors I'm going to use on which section. I will say that once this is assembled, because I've seen videos online, there are actually four or five different sections once it comes apart and you can pick and choose obviously which color you wanna put on each of those. As long as we don't spray the actual keycaps themselves, which we will be removing, or the key switches or circuit board that they are mounted to, which we will also be removing, pretty much everything else externally can be sprayed. Um, and once it's reassembled, none of the paint will actually get in the way of any of the functionality of the keyboard. So it's not like we need to mask anything off. It's just kind of pop it off. And once it's in its you know, individual panel form, spray them down, let them dry, carefully reassemble, and you're good to go. So uh, that's what we're gonna be doing right now. Okay guys, so this is my keyboard here. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it from my USB hub so that it's not powered while I'm working on it. Obviously a good idea. You can see the lights are out now. So I'm gonna flip this guy over and from what I've seen online, there are a handful of screws that need to be removed from the backside prior to the panels being separated. There's also going to be some clips internally that I'll have to remove or, or separate once we get to that point. That shouldn't be an issue now that I've got my new tools here. I'm going to carefully disconnect the wrist rest, which sort of just pops off here and place that off to the side. I do believe I'm going to paint that as well because why not? Um, you can see here, Logitech G710, mechanical gaming keyboard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 screws to be removed. Alrighty, and start removing screws. That is the last screw right there. Let's go ahead and see if we can pry this guy open. I'm gonna take one of my little clip tools right here, and we'll see what we can do. That seems to be it right there. Now there is one small connection and that is the, uh, hopefully you can see it there. That is the roller knob to the actual circuit board. So I'm gonna very carefully disconnect that guy right there. So now we've got our top panel here and you can see what's left on that is the roller, which we can separate from the keyboard and put aside and a couple of switches there which we should also be able to remove. So we'll put that aside for now. Then we've got the bulk of the electronics of the keyboard, which is all the switches and the plate that they sit on, the separator. So I believe I can actually pull the plate out and paint that as well if I want to, but that would require taking all of the keycaps off. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to do that, but while I'm disassembling it, I should do it anyways, just to give the thing a good clean. So I guess we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so that is all of the keys off there, or the key caps, I should say. Uh, you should be able to see, looking at this, that there is a fair bit of debris and grit on the surface of this keyboard. Uh, hair and dust and stuff like that. Obviously, we want to get as much of that cleaned off as possible while we have this all disassembled. Um, the keycaps themselves, I think I'm actually going to take and soak in a bucket of water uh, just to get them a nice scrub before I put them back on. Okay, so next I'm going to see if I can go ahead and remove some of the screws that are holding the plate and the circuit board down to the actual underside panel of the, uh, of the keyboard. Now, I'm not certain I'm going to be able to get it up, but I'm going to remove a few screws and see where I get uh, before I completely write it off as an option because I would like to be able to paint the underside of the keyboard as well. 
Okay, so it does seem like after removing just four screws, I should be able to get this entire setup out of the bottom panel. However, I do need to make a few more disconnections for the actual USB power connectors and controller connectors that connect the cable to the actual circuit board itself, though that shouldn't be too difficult. I'm gonna give that a shot now. So now that I've got those two disconnected, you can see there's actually a small, <laughs> speaking of grounded, there's a small little uh, grounding attachment right there. One of the screws that I disconnected was to hold that attached to the board. All right, so let's see if we can get this circuit board and plate out of here. There we go. So that's that right there. And on the other side, you can see the circuit board with its many, many solder joints. Like I said, each switch is two pins, which have to be soldered, and each LED, which each switch has, is two pins, which have to be soldered. And we'll put that off to the side for now. Now we're left with this base piece, which I don't think has anything on it that can't be painted on either side, other than these two um, plastic connectors for the USB control for the keyboard. You can see these guys right here. Hopefully you can see these guys right here. And uh, I'll simply mask those up so that they don't get paint on them. You only have to worry about paint getting on the tips, so I'll just wrap the tips in some, uh, some masking tape and they should be fine. So, we are ready to start cleaning here. Okay, so while I was upstairs getting some uh, soapy water to go ahead and toss my key switches into, I also grabbed this guy right here. This is a microfiber shop towel. Um, I buy these by the pack of 20 from auto stores. Um, actually, I have an advanced auto parts down the street that always has these in stock. These are great if you need to wipe something down, get it super dry and clean, and also not leave behind any weird strings or fibers, which normal towels will do. So I grabbed one of these, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and just toss all of these lovely keycaps right into this very, very hot, soapy water. Just using Dawn dish detergent. Nothing special, no special keyboard keycap cleaner here. So, those are all in there now. I'm gonna place that on the floor next to my workbench, which is what I'm calling my desk, obviously. Um, and I'm gonna to get to wiping things down. So, we have our damp sponge, which I can also re-dampen in the uh, soapy water if I need to. And, oh, one more thing I actually wanted to show you guys that I'm going to be using. This is a 200 pack of lens wipes. Uh, these ones happen to be Nikon. It does not matter. Um, the whole idea is that lens wipes use alcohol and a very, very smooth cleaning surface for cleaning camera lenses. That means that whatever I wipe these on is going to dry very quickly and it's not going to leave behind any kind of residue which would later corrode. So it's great for wiping down circuit boards and other electronic components. So I'm likely going to be using some of those. But let's go ahead and get started with this area right here. Okay, so, not perfect, but looking a lot better. No large chunks of debris or hair in there anymore. Let's go ahead and give the back side, the side that's actually going to get painted, a wipe. Um, I believe I can take these footrests out, which I will likely want to do. That too is looking pretty spiffy. Go ahead and set this entire piece off to the side. And bring this guy out. Now this is gonna be where most of the gunk needs to be cleaned off aside from the spaces between the key switches. Now these key switches, this is something that I'm going to have to deal with because I obviously can't paint it with these attached. I'm not quite certain how to remove them, but I'm going to see if I can figure that out. Ah. There we go. Looks like if I simply push from the bottom out, let's see if I can get this guy so you guys can see it. Yeah, if I simply push from the bottom out, they just come right out the other side. Okay, so the only thing that's left here to deal with now is the actual, um, oh, and I should pop this out as well. These are the light panels, the light piping for the uh, caps lock, number lock. So yeah, the only thing I have left to deal with is this 
volume roller uh, dial, which is attached to a circuit board, small circuit board on the back. So unfortunately, it looks like that's actually uh, sort of plastic riveted to the case. I don't know if you can see these here. These small black spots are actually melted pieces of plastic that are flattened out to hold that circuit board in place. So I can't actually pull that out. There's really nothing to separate or remove or anything like that. So I'm simply going to have to mask this roller off very carefully and then paint and hopefully not screw that up too badly. Lastly, here we've got the circuit board with the switches soldered to the other side. We're not gonna bother cleaning off the circuit board because that should be perfectly fine. However, I definitely wanna clean off this area here. I think for this, I'm going to use the lens wipes because I don't wanna risk getting any residue on here that might have, that might give the electronics issues when I power things back up. All right, so hopefully you can see from looking at that. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe down the wrist, uh, wrist support real quick. And I think that's actually the last piece that needs to be wiped before I can get into uh, doing a little bit of taping for that volume bar and then diving into spray painting. All right guys, so uh, hopefully this isn't too weird of an angle. I've gone ahead and taped off the uh, cord where it's nearest to the actual back panel. I was also going to tape off the rubber feet, but then I decided I kind of just want the whole thing to be one solid color. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the satin white and I'm gonna give it a couple of quick test sprays. Looks like it's pretty well mixed. All right, I think that's a pretty nice coat right there. The only thing that's showing through is a little bit of the model number sticker from the original G710 Plus labels. But other than that, that is a pretty solid coat of white. I don't see any thin spots. I don't see any runs. I made sure to get it even on all sides. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna flip it over and hit the inside. All right, so I've gone ahead and taped off just the G710 Plus logo right there because I thought it'd be fun to kind of have that rectangle, you know, with the original logo in black. I'm then gonna do this entire thing in blue and then I'm gonna come back once it's dry and tape over the border and then I'm gonna spray this high gloss black section in the middle, which will at that point be blue. I'm gonna spray that pink. So I'll end up with a blue border all the way around with the black G710 Plus logo surrounded by the pink sort of, I guess it's the, the back plate that the keycaps are going to be uh, you know, wrapped in. And I may come back and do this orange section over here in white at the end as well. Let's see how this comes out. Okay, I've now also taped off the volume wheel, which I was very close to spraying over. I caught that at the very last second. So let's go ahead and put some glue on here. Pretty happy with that right there. Okay guys, so while I let that blue paint dry, which is obviously necessary for me to go ahead and mask it and do the pink coat, I'm going to go ahead and wipe off my keycaps, which have been soaking for a good probably hour, hour and a half now. Hopefully you can see in there, right on that white stem here, why don't I do this? Whoop. Okay, see that white stem in there? I don't know if you can see it, but at the base of that stem there is a black o-ring. That O-ring is there to help dampen the sound of the key when it bottoms out. A key bottoms out when you press down on it, 
and it reaches the bottom of its travel and essentially bangs against the top of the key switch. Um, those O-rings give it more of a k k k sound. If you take the O-rings off, you get more of a sound. It's more of a tap, 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 plastic on plastic. I kind of like that sound. Um, I think it adds to the typing experience. So I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and take all of these O-rings off while I do this. Um, some people may think I'm crazy. Maybe I am. All right guys, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and finished uh, drying off all of the keycaps and removing all of the O-rings. Uh, that was about 45 minutes worth of work. Wasn't too bad. Um, it's kind of relaxing actually, <laughs> doing them one at a time. I have uh, checked on both of the cases, the blue and the white. They are both looking very nice. I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, spray the wrist rest with the pink and that'll give the blue a little bit more time to dry up. It's, it's feeling pretty dry, but I really don't trust the, uh, the tape to not tear the blue off when I mask it so that I can do the pink. I'm a little worried about that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and spray this guy so we can see what the pink looks like, and that should give the blue some more time to dry. Do a little test here. Ooh, that is very light. Wondering if that's not shaking enough. Keep in mind, this is what we're going for here. Let's try another spritz here and see what we get. Mm, I don't know. That feels very light to me. I'm gonna give it a bit more shake. Now this could also be because the, the white and blue are the Krylon Fusion all-in-one. Any angle, any surface. This is the Krylon Color Max Paint and Primer. It says it does plastic, no runs, no drips, no errors. I am a little worried after doing my test sprays, but I'm gonna have to go ahead and see what happens. Let's go ahead and give that a minute to get a little tacky, and then I'll hit it with a few more sprays. I can already see that it's beating around the edges, and it's running a bit on the face. It's pooling along the edge. Definitely not as smooth of a coat. This may take a few hits to get it to look as good as the other two. The other two look real nice, you'll see. Okay guys, so this is what it looks like after two coats. First coat, waited 10 minutes. Second coat, it's better than it was initially, but I'm very unhappy with this stuff compared to the um, the other brand that I was using, or the other, I guess the other um, type of Krylon that I was using, which is the Fusion. Uh, that stuff went on beautiful, one coat, smooth, like just couldn't ask for better. This stuff is runny, it pools, it can't do vertical or even slightly angled surfaces. I had to use some gaff tape, as you can see, to sort of lift the, uh, the lower edge of the wrist guard up so that it was a bit more level across the top, but you can see the edges still have a ton of bleed and all of the paint is pooling along the bottom rim, which I'm hoping now that I've let the second coat dry, a very light third coat will catch on to those spots that are a little thin and even it out a bit, but I am super unhappy with this Color Max stuff and I'm definitely going to be using the Fusion for all of my projects going forward. The other downside is I was planning on using this to do a cutout section on my uh, blue front plate, but now that I've seen how it paints, I'm absolutely not going to do that. Uh, I will show you what I am going to do. I think I have an alternative plan that'll look pretty cool because I don't want to do just blue, but uh, yeah, super bummed that I can't use this the way that I wanted to. It's, it's so different. It's like it's a completely different paint. Okay, so here is my blue faceplate. Um, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but it came out just super smooth, like perfect, no issues. Looks like there is one little piece of hair stuck to it that I can pop off right there for you. But I mean, really, really great. That fusion paint is amazing. Um, so my plan, 
move this aside for a second so that I can test this theory. If you guys have ever seen what happens when you flip a can of basic spray paint upside down, you get this kind of spitting, um, spritzing effect. And I'm thinking that might look cool on the blue. It'll look something like this. Hopefully you guys can see that there. Um, I actually should, <laughs> I should just let that dry and see how it comes out uh, to make sure, because that's the blue right there, obviously. Make sure that it looks decent. All right, guys, here we go. Wish me luck. I'm gonna have to do a little, gonna have to do a little bit off to the side to get started. Super risky maneuver here. All right, I think that's as good as we're gonna get. I think I like it. I know you guys can't really see it right now. But we definitely got that pink speckled effect on there. Let me wipe my hand off. I'll hold it up so that you can see it. Anyways, hopefully that gives you a little idea of what we got here. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That speckled pink on blue look. Okay, so as you guys can see, keycaps are all dry here. I'm gonna knock these O-rings out of the way for a second. And I'm just gonna sort of drag this off to the side so that these guys can continue to rest not in the way. Um, I wanted to bring the finished front plate up here. I'm going to give you guys a nice look at this at the end, just so you can see here. It did come out pretty decent. I'm happy with it. And what I want to do is very carefully uh, peel back the, the tape that I put over the logo. disturbing the speckles that are still drying. That is perfect. It's the one gloss piece, <laughs> so it stands out. That's great. Super happy with that. I also need to get the tape off of my uh, volume dial, but that should be slightly easier because I pulled a little bit of a sneaky one here. If I just turn this knob, if I turn the dial, I should end up with the end of the tape. See there? Just have to keep turning it until I hit the end, which is right here. Now I should be able to pull it off. Boom. Volume knob. Fully functional, good to go. This needs to dry. Um, the, let's see, keycaps are good to go. Circuit board and switches are good to go. Uh, I can tell you that the white back cover is actually still drying because I had to touch up a few spots where I noticed it was a little uneven. That's probably from me over spraying. So uh, unfortunately the way to fix over spraying is to spray a little bit more and let it settle so that everything evens out nice and smooth. So that's what's going on over there. This will likely be dry in the next five to 10 minutes because there's so little pink that I added to this um, that it's gonna dry pretty quickly. Um, and then the only other thing left is for the, the wrist guard to dry, but I'm not going to bother waiting around for that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the night here and I'm gonna let all these things dry up. And when I get back in the morning, we will go through assembly and testing and making sure everything works. I will see you guys in the morning. Okay, so it's the next morning, it's around 8 a.m. And uh, all of the pieces have dried except for the wrist, uh, 
the wrist rest. Unfortunately, because this pink paint is so wet, uh, I checked it this morning and I actually ended up leaving a fingerprint in it because I was completely not expecting it to still be as malleable and tacky as it is. But you can see there, the final coating on the wrist rest is okay. It's certainly not as good as the other two, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, but you can see along the edge here, you can definitely make out a darker um, sort of ring, uh, darker rim. And that's because this paint, the Color Max, uh, just runs, it bleeds, and it doesn't hold its place as well. It doesn't adhere to the plastic as well. Uh, definitely 100% go with the Fusion in the future, the Fusion All-in-One by Krylon. That is the way to go. Uh, this is going to be the cover plate. This nice blue guy right here. And if I can block enough of my face, the camera will actually focus on this. But you should be able to see that came out very nice. It has that speckled pink pattern on it. And this dried perfectly, perfectly even, no runs, perfectly smooth everywhere. Amazing. And then the rear cover is the white. And again, these are satin finishes. So a little bit of gloss, not too much. And so I am going to go ahead and reassemble this thing uh, because I actually have to use it for work today. I have all my keycaps washed and dried. I have, uh, you know, with the O-rings removed, I have the actual circuit board still nice and clean, ready to go, ready to pop that back on. And yeah, let's see if I can get this thing back together in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, so that's all of the screws back into place. It definitely tightened things up as I was putting them in, I could tell that. Um, one thing that I did notice while I was doing it was I actually left this label on the back here and I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to get it off because of how much residue it was gonna leave behind and I didn't wanna to have to try to scrub all that off. So I just painted over it. However, there was another label, I can't remember which piece it was on, that I ended up removing and that actually didn't leave behind much of any residue. So I think I'm actually gonna to try to pull this off now and it'll leave a cool little sort of black um, out or cut out in the middle of the white back. Not that you're gonna look at the back of your keyboard that often, but I think it might look cool. So I'm gonna see if I can get this guy up very carefully. Very nice. I really like how that looks. It's even got a cool little Triforce pattern in it. All right, uh, let's go ahead and put the, the little feet back on here. Again, these should snap right into place without much issue because it's not like the paint pooled into these holes. Nice. So we've got the feet back into place now. And I'm actually gonna pop those out. And you can see we didn't do any damage to our USB port either because that was obviously removed as part of the circuit board and was not in there when we were painting. It was just an empty space. So now all that's left to do is go ahead and reconnect all, or reattach all of the keycaps, which I have over here. And again, I'm gonna use that image of the keyboard just to help me with the layout. Well guys, I think we're done here. Um, I've got all the keycaps back on. I've plugged it into my computer to make sure that I'm getting power, to make sure that I'm getting all of my keys illuminating, which I am. Um, it looks like my volume rocker works fine. All my media keys work fine. The keys sound great now. Um, I can't type on it right now because like I said, I'm using it to actually control my computer right now. Um, but the USB port works on the back. I've got my mouse plugged in through there and I'm getting power. Everything looks great. Uh, all of the keys line back up perfectly. It looks really nice with this paint job. Um, overall, I am very happy with the way this came out.
Well, that's it. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. We definitely uh, learned some things along the way, like do not use the Krylon Color Max paint and definitely stick with the Fusion all-in-one paint. And that this Cobalt Toolkit is actually indispensable as far as working on things like this. It was extremely useful. I used almost every part of this thing on just this one little project. Um, I am very happy with how this came out. If you have the same keyboard or a similar keyboard and you wanted to undertake this project, it really wasn't too bad. It probably took about four hours in total with a little bit of drying time throughout the night and then maybe another hour and a half to two hours this morning to wrap things up. But I now have a fully custom painted, fully functional, uh, badass keyboard that I am very happy with. Uh, thanks for checking this video out. If you haven't yet, go down below and subscribe. Make sure you set your notification bell to all. If you wanna leave a like or a dislike, go ahead and do that as well as a comment. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.